in a much more targeted way, rather than having a huge and expensive new government program. Mr. Tanner also suggested that the number of the uninsured in America is inflated. Could you please comment about these two points? We hear a lot about the validity of the number of the uninsured. Why is this so? And is there any way to insure more Americans without handing this over to the government? Uh, thank you. I, I did have the opportunity to read uh, Michael Tanner's piece, and it's it's a real good article. Uh, I think you can find it at the Cato Institute's website for those of you who are interested in looking at it. It's a real nice piece. I think the main point of uh, Michael Tanner's article uh, was not so much um, in terms of the number of uninsured, but more along the lines of what it means to be uninsured in America. Um, because I think there is a popular misconception uh, among uh, many people that to be uninsured means that you are completely without health care. Um, one example of, of how this is not true uh, is, for example, uh, EMTALA legislation, which requires every hospital that provides, that receives Medicare funds in the United States to provide care, uh, emergency care, for every single person who comes to the door. That applies uh, no matter what their status is, no matter what their ability to pay is, and in, uh, it also applies no matter what their citizenship status is. So I think uh, that's one of the things that uh, Tanner pointed out. The other thing that he pointed out is that there's a misconception that if you're uninsured, it automatically means that, that you lack the means to afford insurance. And if you look at the statistics, uh, the statistics show that a good number of people who are uninsured are uninsured because they chose not to buy insurance, though they had insurance available to them through employers uh, and though they had the money to afford that insurance. Um, there's another, uh, in, the, in the calculations that they have, I think the number that Tanner suggests is 47 million uh, uninsured people. Uh, in that number, uh, 10 million of those uh, people that are calculated are Ill illegal aliens. Um, so that uh, drives the number up. Uh, another uh, 12 million of the people, nearly a quarter of the people referred to uh, in that number that keeps being thrown around, uh, are people who are covered by Medicaid, uh, including uh, many children who have access to the S-CHIP program and, and other means to uh, receive care. So I, I really think that the, the main point that, that uh, Tanner makes, and it's a credible point, is that we need to really uh, look closely to see uh, who we are talking about. Make no mistake about it, if you are uninsured and you have a catastrophic illness, it will impact you and that is something that we need to address. I think the biggest issue is how we go about addressing that. And uh, you know, he offered a number of suggestions um, and I think the, the best one that, that was in there, uh, actually there were two. One is that we, we stop rating our insurance plans on a community basis so that if I'm a young and healthy person who has made uh, great lifestyle choices, um, I'm paying the same rate as someone who hasn't, who is a greater risk. It should be adjusted to the individual uh, rather than in group plans, and I think Ryan could probably talk about this better than me, um, you're rating everybody together. Uh, the second thing is, is that right now, if, uh, if you buy insurance through your employer, that is pre-tax dollars. So there's a, a substantial tax incentive to, to buy through your employer. Um, however, if you were to buy insurance on your own, there is no such benefit, and you're using post-tax dollars uh, to, to uh, achieve that. I think you should, uh, we should look at whether or not we can give a break, uh, a tax break on that. The um, question is, is there a way to insure more Americans uh, without handing this over to government? Let me whip off at least a half a dozen. Uh, allow the creation of association health plans. This would allow small employers to, to come together uh, and form large purchasing pools, such as labor unions and large corporations. You could join through a Grange or your um, Farm Bureau or National Federation of Independent Business, even through your organization, if it's been around for at least three years and it's shown it can be responsible. 
That will greatly enlarge the number of insured. It will do away with pre-existing illnesses as a bar to insurance, and it'll bring down the cost of health and accident insurance. Second, expand tax availability to health savings accounts. How many here have the HSAs? Good number here. Those will be eliminated if this bill is put into, put into effect. Three, expand small business tax deductions for health care expenses. Mom and pops are not allowed to buy health insurance uh, with, with, um, with pre-tax payroll, with pre-payroll tax dollars. If they were allowed to, that'd bring down the cost of health insurance by 15.6% off the top. Create refundable tax credits to help low-income Americans purchase health insurance. Many people should be given the option to pay income tax or buy health insurance. It simply makes sense. That way the government's not directly involved. Preserve the high quality care of America through America's community health clinics. Crusader Clinic in Rockford last year saw 46,000 people. They deliver one out of four uh, babies and have one of the, uh, it's one of the highest rated clinics uh, in, in the country. Five, reforming our out of control medical liability system. There's not one word in this bill about tort reform. Nothing to bring down the high cost of, um, uh, of medical liability insurance for, for, the, for, the, perform, for the Americans. Uh, create incentives to save now for future long-term health care needs. Create a high risk pool for those who are maxing out on their million dollar caps on health insurance. These are not hard uh, to enact. Twice the House passed association health plans and it missed uh, a vote in the Senate, missed, missed it by two votes and therefore it failed. Twice the House passed uh, reasonable medical liability insurance. Each time the Senate did not bring it up. That's because you need 60 votes in the Senate in order to move the bill. Thank you, Representative. 